Hello, today we're going to take a look at a 20 minute class on the morality of human acts. Every action that a human being makes has a morality to it to some degree or another. Some are not that important, but most of them are to decide what's a good act, what's a bad act, so that we can understand what we want to do, which is good, and what we want to avoid, which is bad. Now, one of the things here, we talk about morality of human acts. Why is that word important? We're not interested in any old acts, which means we're not interested in animal acts because they have no free will and therefore they have no morality, regardless of what some people may think. They do not have morality. And the human acts has to be, as a human being, it's an act that I do with my freedom and my rationality because I'm free. Sometimes perhaps I am not entirely that free because something is interfering with my will. Something is imposing on it and I can't handle it right away. We'll take a look at that a little more. In the act, we're talking about the object of the act, the intention of the act, and the circumstances. These three points mark out every act that we do. I think the most important thing is the object of the act. We'll take a look at that again, but I just want to give you the general idea to determine what is the object of the act that I'm doing. Intention, what's in my heart? What, are, what is my intention? And circumstances, what are the circumstances around me? The basic part of the morality of the act is the object. The intentions can change an objective act that is good to make it not so good. Circumstances have no real effect on the morality of the act. The act is based on the object itself. So I just put that up there so you kind of get the big picture. Before we kind of go into that, we'll get back to this, perhaps to this board. But the idea is it's our conscience that has to determine what is a good act and a bad act, which is a practical judgment that we have that's in our system through our rationality. So it's a judgment. I think it's important to understand that it is a judgment, that we have to make a judgment. We make the judgment because that's the way the conscience is set up. It's a practical judgment because once we make the judgment, then it also leads us into choosing the good or avoiding the evil. And that's where the conscience helps us. Sometimes our conscience tells us that something is good and it's not good. Part of that is that the conscience is not well formed. If it's not well formed, it can mistakenly call something bad as good or something good as bad. Though usually it's something that's bad calling it good. That's why we go back to the Ten Commandments. That's why we go back to those basic things that form our conscience to be able to make a good judgment that will help us to do what is good. So um, sometimes a person may become very angry with another person. And the conscience later says to the person, you know you were very angry with that other person. The one who's trying to make the human act realize, I couldn't help it. I was on a medication. I have cancer. I have chemo. I don't have complete control of my emotions. And so I was angry, but it wasn't really a human act. It was out of my control. Uh, sometimes there are things we do that are not really human because of those kinds of circumstances that we have no avoidance of. Sometimes kind of a little more complex is if a person is hooked on alcohol or drugs, they may make an act that is not really human because they cannot use their rationality, they cannot use their ability to choose good or evil. Their freedom is impeded. Sometimes we have to keep that in mind. The um, acts of a child who's three years old is not a human act because the child is too young. You know, sometimes I have this, women come to me and they say, well, my child really upsets me and I get upset at the child and I push the child around and I tell them over and over again, don't do that, do this, so on and so forth. And I'll say, well, how old is the child? And they'll say, two and a half. I think, lady, you know, you can't do that with a child and expect it to have a conscience to make a right choice because it's too young, has no ability, can't do it. 
So the crucial act in this is the object. And it can be difficult to identify the object of the act. I think it's, I think it's a challenge. We just take a look here. We say the object of the act, it's not the physical action. Excuse this poor. Not the physical action. The object of the act is really the purpose why I'm doing something. And if the object is bad, then the act is bad. So, for example, if I lie, then the object is bad. You say, well, I'm lying for good intention. Doesn't matter. Lying is bad. The object is bad. Um, maybe sometimes I'm cheating on an exam for some reason or another, and I can justify it. The object is bad. The act is bad. A person could say that I've met a woman who's very beautiful, but she's in a very unhappy marriage, and she's reaching out. And as a result, the object of my act is that I enter into adultery with her. You say, well, the act is no good because it's adultery. And the um, person has to understand if the object is bad, these things don't make any difference. The object has to be good. Somebody could pick up a rock and throw the rock. The physical action is to throw the rock. Doesn't mean anything. What's he throwing the rock for? What is the object of throwing the rock? Well, the rock could be to go through a window and smash the window out of revenge for somebody, which is wrong. The object is wrong to smash somebody else's window. Or the object could be to kill a venomous snake that's about to attack somebody. And so you're throwing the rock to kill the snake. Well, in that case, it's defense of life. Maybe your life, maybe the life of another. Same action, but it has different objects. So the object of my act is very important to determine. Sometimes it's, it's hard to figure that out. You have to think twice. Um, you may want to listen to this more than once after you hear what I say today. Um, sometimes we can use the object by saying a lie. And you say, well, no, the lie is to defend that person's honor. I can't tell the truth, so I lie about it. And you cannot use a lie because it's objectively it's wrong always to lie, even though you have a good intention, even though you may even think you have some kind of circumstances that justify it. You can't use a lie. You have to find some other way to, to deal with that situation where you speak the truth or you avoid saying the falsehood. Now, sometimes people have to learn how to maybe not speak the truth in a situation that it could be uncharitable, but that doesn't mean they lie. It just means they don't tell the truth as a, a reasonable alternative. Some of these things we have to see as being the object it really follows God's law. Whenever the object does not follow God's law, it's wrong. And if it's wrong, it means that the act is morally wrong. The morality of the human act, if the object is wrong, it's not moral. It becomes bad. Sometimes um, we have these situations where people will tell us, well, my intention was good. I did it with the right idea in mind. Granted, that may be true, but that doesn't uh, allow it. God's law is based on our nature. And so when God gives us it, he's telling us what we should do in our objects in order to fit in with the nature of who we are as human beings, dealing with other human beings. And the law is not arbitrary that's just being imposed on us. The law is opening us up to understand what it is to be a good human being. And virtue is part of the morality of human acts. If I do objective things. I go after virtuous things all the time. I develop a good virtue that I will do it without even thinking twice. And that's part of the notion of morality of human acts. If I do good things over and over again, it becomes more natural for me to do good things over and over again. If I do bad things over and over again, I do slip into a certain level of sinfulness. I, I accept it. Maybe in the beginning the sin is not so bad, but maybe after a while I get so accustomed to it that I fall into the trap of using it more often. And 
beginning to develop some bad habits. So that's the object. I think it's, um, it's difficult to identify the moral object. It takes reflection at times, but that's something that we have to think of. And as I said, the physical deed is not the same as the moral object of the object of the act. What is my purpose in order to um, in order to do the right thing? The next thing is the intention. Um, I think the intention is pretty clear. What's in my heart? Why do I do this? I'm trying to do this for something good or something bad. Now, if the act is a good act, objectively, I want to do that act with a good intention of doing the good thing because it's the right thing. Sometimes the act is a good act, but I do it with a bad intention, which means that the act now is no longer moral because the bad intention takes me off the path. For example, the object is to give money to the poor. And then maybe I give a lot of money and I make a big deal about it. So the object is good, giving money to the poor, but I'm doing it mostly for prestige. I want people to like me. Not really because it helps poor people or that it improves the society in which I live. So I've turned a good act into something that's not good because of the bad intention. Other times, I do an act that's very good, and when my intention is really there, it, it makes the act that much better. Something to think about, um, of the intentions of my act. Sometimes the, um, the good act does no good for the person if the person does not have the right intention. And that's part of the thing. Is, it's not just doing things in general, but it's also that I want to do morally good things so that I grow. And, and that's where the intention can change the act from being good to bad, regardless of what the object is. The last part is the circumstances. Circumstances never change the morality of the act. Never. What do the circumstances do? Well, the circumstances can make a good act better or less good, but it's good. Or the circumstances can make an evil act worse evil or less evil, but it's an evil act. So the circumstances do not change what the object is all about. It just heightens the good or lowers the good or heightens the evil, lowers the evil. That's what the circumstances are. It's um, Sometimes it's that we feel that we have to solve this problem. We find people who are poor in our society. So what do we do? We're like Robin Hood. We go out and what do we, what do, we do? Is we go out and we rob the poor, which is bad, and the circumstances make it perhaps worse. Because maybe when I rob the poor, which is evil, I don't just take $100 from people who have $25 million. I take $100 from people who have $150. Both cases, they're evil. But one case is significantly evil because the circumstances are that the other person doesn't have anything. Uh, these are the kinds of circumstances that can make an object better or worse. Small things, but crucial things for the morality of human acts. So time to go. Morality of human acts, object, intention, circumstances. There's more we could go into, but we've run out of time. And we will try and go over these things down the road.